joined by Tim Kobe, the founder of 8 Inc. That's an experienced design firm. And Tim, tell us what it is an experienced design firm does. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we do a lot of things that, that other design firms do from maybe the, um, the end result. We probably come at it in a very different way. So our, our focus is really to look at what is a human outcome. So in many cases, depending on, on what the project is, the human outcome is in, in what way uh, are you developing a relationship between people and companies. And so um, if, you, if you look at that across different categories, if that's in retail, for example, the retailer wants to have a transaction. And what we want to do is develop a relationship between the brand and, and the and the, uh, the people that they want to have as their customers, but do it in a way that, that makes it more meaningful, makes it, makes it um, more relevant, and uh, ideally in, in a way that, that creates a, a deeper bond between people and, and uh, other people, you know, companies and others. Tim, you're not just any design firm, you're actually the mastermind behind the Apple stores, and you've been working with Steve Jobs when he was still alive on a weekly basis. Tell us about that and how you were working together with Apple, who made it such a, a world-renowned uh, brand, and especially the experience going into an Apple store is completely different than to going to, into any other store in this in this world. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, it, it's, we, we started working with Apple in, in 1997, um, when Steve first came back, came back to the company, and it was primarily to launch the products uh, and create the events around a product launch. So if you remember the old colored IMAX, that was our first uh, product launch for Apple. Um, a, a year or so into that relationship, um, I wrote a white paper on why Apple should do retail, uh, their own standalone stores. And um, we had been doing work with Nike and we had been doing work with the North Face. Each of those were manufacturers who had other people who were managing the direct relationship with their customers. So. Our opinion was Apple would be more successful if, if they owned that relationship, if they if they could really manifest that. And Steve Steve knew that that he was going to struggle to, to to be able to describe what made Apple different if he had to do it through a translator. And so the the idea of having your your own uh, relationship between your customers is something that's very normal today, but at the time was pretty pretty unusual. I still think it's very unusual. Yeah. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you know, we, we started working um, with him, as I said, in 97. When we started the retail program, we, we were meeting every week, basically, uh, for that. We started with a whiteboard and my business partner, myself, and Steve, and then uh, started to develop what that program could be. And many, many people came in, and, you know, Ron Johnson and, and, and uh, many uh, executives came to the company, and the business started to grow around that. But we developed the first. The first format, which which uh, launched in uh, 2001, and uh, immediately started <laughs> the next the next year uh, developing an, an improvement that was based on new new products were being released and colors and materials and things were changing. So we designed a second series of formats for the retail program and the different size stores from small, medium, and large uh, formats, um, working on uh, the high profile stores as well. So was it your idea that in an Apple store you're greeted at the door, there's no actual counter, you you tell the, the employee, here I want the new iPhone, and they just you know go into the back, get a new iPhone, and then sell it to you just there where you are standing. Is that was that your well, creation? Uh, it was I think it, it came it came out of it came out of that uh, that development process. So meeting every week, we had working prototypes. Once once we got the the physical design up to a certain point. Uh, the human behavior part became a, ver a very important part to, to work into the design. And um, obviously the communications and the products are developed uh, internally at, at Apple. But the, what was the right human interaction was something that was a key part of that development. And I think um, you know, things like the Genius Bar, um, Ron Johnson, we, we had a, a, um, a fixture set up in the space and uh, we happened to, they were running the Genius advertising campaign at the time and we had the the genius images on the wall behind it and uh, uh, Ron came in and said oh what is this a genius bar and that was that was it there I you mean, go. We, you we, had the name. yeah and so and so everybody loved that and uh, that it became 
it became then the behavior. Originally, Steve wanted to have uh, you know a, a direct line for help, and then that direct line for help said, you know, we, we basically developed the genius bar to say, no, the people should be there. You shouldn't have to call them. And so that was that sort of idea. grew out of that that process. So how was it working with Steve Jobs, who some say was a very difficult man in a way? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we always loved working with Steve. Uh, most people who who worked with him would would um, be challenged by his personality. Obviously, he's very demanding, and he had a way of working with people that would, you know, bring you very close one week and and then push you really hard the next week. And you know, he would take you through sort of an emotional uh, roller coaster. But that was in part to manage getting the most from people. Once you got to know his his process and system, you pretty much understood, you know, where you were with him. Um, but as as a man, I think he was he, he's remarkable. I don't I don't see anybody like him in the valley today. Not even Elon Musk. E Elon would be the closest, but I think that, that Steve had a real deep understanding of of what the human experience was. And much of the work we do is trying to focus on what, what is that human outcome. For, for Steve, he was a focus group of one. It had to work, it had to work for him. But uh, you know, the, the idea that you know, Elon is, is great from a technology and engineering standpoint, I think you know, everybody has different strengths. Steve wasn't the engineer that Elon was, but he really understood how technology needed to transform in order to be a human a human, a thing that people would accept, and I think that that, that insight is something that maybe uh, it, it, you know is less less visible these days in in the valley. So is this what you're trying to do with your design company that you're making the human interaction easier, and that companies understand that this is an essential part of selling a product? Yeah, I think you know whether it's easier. I mean, we, it, we always look at it: is, is it simple? Because the way people use things, it, it means things need to be simple. But is it is it uh, honest? Is it something that the brand really can say they stand for? And is it relevant? So if it's simple, honest, and relevant, people tend to connect with it in, in a better way. And um, so what we try to do is create experiences, whether it's in finance, or whether it's in automotive, or airlines, or retail, or you know whatever the, the sector, our clients come to us when, when they want a competitive advantage. So if there's a if there's a, um, a market and it may be saturated or highly competitive, we can definitely help separate them from their competitors, and we do it by by making the experience with the brand far superior to the others. Name a brand here from the region that you're working with, where we can see your work. In the region. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That would be a good example. Um, here in Dubai, perhaps. We're, yeah, we're doing we're doing a project for uh, Crown Prince Development, but. Uh, we can't really talk about what it is okay, until until it's open. All right. um, let's see. Uh, we're just we're just finishing some work uh, for TCOM in the uh, uh, design district, which is where our Dubai offices are located. Um, but uh, in a broader region, we're doing work uh, with Akbank in Istanbul, and um, we're doing, uh, of course, lots of work with um, global brands. So the Lincoln brand in China, we launched. Uh, the Lincoln uh, car company into China. That program has been very successful. We're working with uh, telcos uh, in India right now and uh, in the Philippines. Uh, we've done a big program there that that um, has helped move uh, Globe from uh, third in the market to first in the market. So um, we're, we're you know we're applying this approach, uh, which is which is as I said is probably unique from a design standpoint. But it's it's you know really defining what that human experience is and then um, creating that experience and how do you scale your business I mean how do how do brands get to hear about you do they say oh the Lincoln 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 brand yeah did I say it right, that's right, that's right. Lincoln brand. in China while wow, we, we love their design we love their shops and everything they then approach you or do you approach the brands or how does it work is it word of mouth um, yeah, we're, we're probably not very good at public relations in terms of visibility. We're, we're quite busy, so... Um, no, that's a good a, sign. A lot, we yeah. don't need public relations. Well, I, I, we probably do, but um, no, I mean, you know, the, we're doing work right now with, um, I guess we, we can publicly say with Jaguar Land Rover. So they, they, they heard of us by hearing about the success of the Lincoln program in China, did the secret shopper, and, and then they've had to figure out who, 
who created it, and then they contacted us, and, and so that's that's a um, we're doing a lot of work for them. Um, we just did uh, a large innovation center for Nissan in, in Tokyo, uh, in one of the busiest parts of the city. Um, you know, we're working with uh, development groups in Australia. We're working with Amazing, you know a real you range, range of things. Yeah. So but, you're I mean, up in the air a lot, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, unfortunately, I'm up in the air. You know, very much, very, very much. So, what brings you to Dubai and here to, to the STEP conference? Uh, yeah, so I was I was speaking today on on human experience and and how particularly when you look at companies that are um, in, in this case very much startup oriented, uh, how much they can improve their probability of success by focusing on the human outcome. So most of the time, they focus on themselves. It's very natural to focus on on yourself and particularly when you're trying to create a company. But um, getting young young people and young companies to to focus on the experience that people have with their company um, and do it do it in a, in a meaningful way is is something that will that will uh, ins ensure their probability of success. So um, we do a, a venture side of our business and um, we, we we do our own startups and then we look at at other startups, um, usually there's there's groups who may have an, an incubation system. They have 30 startups in their stable. They'll call us and say, "Can you come and look at them and pick one to bring into your system?" And and when we do, we we tend to have um, a much higher uh, success rate because we we apply what we do for existing old world companies to to what new world companies are. Tim Covey from uh, 8 Inc., thank you so much for joining us and all the best of luck. Thank you.